Hello, thanks for watching. The goal of this video is to introduce to you some of the techniques we use to find limits graphically. In the last video you saw that this notation, the limit as x approaches some value c of the function f of x equals some number l, if and only if as x approaches c from both directions, meaning from both negative values and positive values, uh, if if the y values, if the output values are getting closer and closer to this number l, then we say that the limit as x approaches c of the function is that number at that point. Here's the picture of the graph of some function, and it's a piecewise function. It's probably not one that has a nice rule that you can use to describe it, but it is the graph of a function. And I wanted to just look at some limits and ask you if you think they exist. Uh, the first one is, let's do this, let's say what's the limit as x approaches negative 1 of the function you see there. Well to try and find this limit what I really need to do is take a look at what happens to the function as x gets close to negative 1. Right about in here. So I'll actually look at the graph and I'll say, okay, well, as x gets closer to negative 1 from the negative side, from the left, the y values, see my cursor there, are getting closer and closer to 0. In fact, you could, you could say that f of negative 1 is 0. It's important to note that the limit isn't always the function value at the x value we're seeking. But as x approaches negative 1 from the left side, the y values for the function are getting closer and closer to 0. If I approach x, uh, if, excuse me, if I pro approach negative 1 from the right side, then the closer and closer I get, the y values are getting closer and closer to 0. So I'm, I'm approaching y equals 0 from the left, I'm approaching y equals 0 from the right, and we said that both of those have to line up for the limit to exist. I think that's enough information using only the graph to say that the limit as x approaches negative 1 of f of x is 0. That's the value that y is approach that's the value that y is approaching as x approaches negative 1 in both directions. Let's talk about what happens as x approaches negative 4. That's a different location altogether. That would be like here. That would be saying what happens to y as x gets closer and closer to negative 4. So I'll do kind of the same thing we did over here for negative 1. I'll say, okay, as x gets closer and closer to negative 4, it looks like the y values are getting closer and closer to negative 2, this value here, even though, even though that f of negative 4 is actually 3. In this case, the limit doesn't ask about what the function value is. It's asking what's happening as x gets closer and closer to this particular x value. So as x gets closer and closer to negative 4 from the left, we're approaching y equals negative 2. As x approaches negative 4 from the right, we're getting y closer and closer to negative 2. So even though the function value, the actual dot itself, is something entirely different, the limit as x approaches negative 4 of f of x is this y value, it's negative 2. Let's do one more. Let's do the limit as x approaches 2 of this function. So as x gets closer and closer to 2, if I check from the left side, it looks like the y values are getting closer and closer to y equals 1. As x approaches 2 from the right side, it looks like the y values are getting closer and closer to 2. So, from one direction, I get y equals 1. 
from the other direction I get y equals 2 and that doesn't satisfy the definition of the limit that we looked at in the last video. So this is a situation folks where I'm sorry to tell you that since the values from each direction don't line up I would have to say that limit does not exist and an abbreviation we'll often use is DNE it does not exist. Think you've got it? Well here's a chance for you to try it out on your own. Here's the sketch of another function and I want you to examine it for a few seconds and once you've taken a look at the function I want you to see if you can tell me what these three limits would be. Try using the graph of the functions to determine it. And don't be afraid to say does not exist if you think the limit isn't uh, an existing limit. So I'm going to ask you to pause the video for a few seconds, jot down what you think each limit is, and then when you think you've got them, hit play and we'll see how you did. Okay, hopefully you've determined what you think the limits are by now. So let's see what we think's going on here. Let me first of all look at this first situation. Let me look at the limit as x approaches negative 5. So I'll find where x is negative 5 right here. And I'll say, okay, uh, as you approach negative 5 from the left side, the y values are getting closer and closer to 0. Um, it's also true that f of negative 5 is 0, but that's really not what we're, what we're asking about here. Um, I've told my students in the past that limits remind me of talking about the car ride on the way to your vacation, not the actual vacation. It doesn't matter the destination, it matters what happens getting there. So from the left, si from the left side we approach y equals 0. From the right side, we approach, actually we're a constant function, we approach y equals zero. We get the same value both ways. I'm ready to say what this limit is. The limit as x approaches negative five of this function shown is zero, for sure. If I try negative four, as x approaches negative four from the left side, we're talking about getting closer and closer to zero. But as x approaches four, negative four from the right side, we're getting closer and closer to a totally different value, positive 3. So from the left side we're approaching 0, from the right side we're approaching 3. This limit doesn't exist. This limit doesn't exist. Because we're approaching different values from the left and the right. And what about it at positive 1? What's the limit there? Well, as x approaches positive 1 from the left side, our y values are approaching positive 3. It turns out that there's a hole there. They call this a, a discontinuity, a break in the function. There is no f of 1. But as x approaches 1 from the left side, y is approaching 3. As x approaches 1 from the right side, y is approaching 3. So even though that function value is not there, there is no f of 1, the limit as x approaches 1 still exists. It's 3. Hopefully you did very well. We've got some exercises for you to try now. Thank you very much for watching this video and I will see you very soon.